A few nights ago, I actually had a strange dream. The dream actually involved Miss Fushi. It was so strange that I have to post this right now. Now, I can't remember exactly how it went, but this is how I believe the dream progressed. The dream started with me waking up in a dark, heavily distorted void with water droplets falling around me. I began to calmly look around for a few moments before then realizing that the ground I was standing on was starting to become liquid. I struggled as hard as I could, but I was unable to free myself and I ended up sinking through the rippling ground. I then fell through a psychedelic chasm filled with eyes and random shapes before eventually falling through a large green eyeball that just so happened to be below me. This eyeball led to a swirling red and black chamber with a hole in the center filled with a gray goo. I ended up landing in this gray goo and it began to smother me. Suddenly, an arm reached out and pulled me out of the gray goo. I began to slowly recover as I was standing up and I became more aware of what is happening. It was then that I saw who it was that pulled me out of the gray goo. It was Miss Fushi, but something was different about her. Instead of her usual purple hair, it was blood red. She was also clad in a green formal dress. Miss Fushi asked if I was okay and I answered yes. She then revealed that she was in the same predicament that I was and offered to help me escape this strange realm that I was trapped in. Knowing this was my only a chance to escape, I accepted her offer. Miss Fushi led me away from the pool of grey goo and towards a door leading to a poorly lit stone corridor. As we slowly walked down the corridor, strange green creatures that were infested began approaching us. One of these green creatures was a horribly deformed blobfish-like creature with a small dorsal fin and pectoral and anal fins doubling as legs. It attempted to jump at me, but I grabbed it, slammed it to the ground, and stomped on it, putting it out of action. Then I noticed three vaguely bird-like creatures with reptilian heads and insect-like eyes and wings flying towards us from behind. Miss Fushi and I ran until I saw a stairwell leading upward. We climbed the stairwell until we saw another psychedelic realm similar to the one I fell through earlier. Miss Fushi then closed the trap door, preventing the bird-like creatures from ever bothering us again. After evading the bird-like creatures, Miss Fushi and I took our first steps through this strange new psychedelic area, which happened to be a dark maze lined with strange blue lights. We traversed the maze by following these strange lights, encountering more strange creatures along the way, including a floating eye encased in two squares overlapping each other at 45 degree angles, another blobfish-like creature, this one being peach color and having a larger dorsal fin than the one from before. A cat-eyed ghost with red horns and a gaping mouth filled with razor-sharp teeth. Creepy millipede-like creatures, tall and lanky humanoids, and more of the vaguely bird-like creatures from before. Only this time, they were gray instead of green. The blue lights eventually led us to a puce door that served as the maze's exit. I put my ear on the door and heard creepy thumping and gurgling noises before finally reaching for the knob and opening the door. To both my and Miss Fushi's surprise and horror, the door led to a nightmarish passage lined with flesh. The puce floor had blood vessels all over it. As with the rest of my dream, this passage was inhabited by a slew of creepy creatures, but unlike the ones from before, these creatures looked like a horrifying cross between actual creatures and gore. Despite this rather nauseating appearance, we weren't going to let it bother us and chose to press on. As Miss Fushi and I walked through the flesh line corridor, it began to fill with deadly yellow gas being emitted from several pores in the walls. 
we started running for our lives while coughing and choking. Suddenly, a hideous creature resembling a blood fluke appeared from a pore in the ceiling and dropped onto Miss Fushi. Not wanting to continue without her, I turned around and attempted to pry the blood flute off of her, but it stubbornly refused to move, and with the gasp of sapping my and Miss Fushi's health, it was a race against time. I began to search everywhere in the flesh passage before finally uncovering a lump of gore that I had passed by earlier. To my surprise, there was a strange creature resembling a tardigrade. Before it could bite me, I snatched the tardigrade out of the air, ran back to where the blood fluke was, and forced the tardigrade to spit up powerful juice by squeezing it. This juice was so vile that it forced the blood fluke to release Miss Fushi and crawl away in agony with the tardigrade flying after it. Now my focus became stopping the poisonous gas, but now I had to act fast due to the horrible state that Miss Fushi and I were now in. With her in tow, I raced down the fleshy corridor until I saw another puce door in the corner, this one having a red eye on it. I opened the door to find a switch that appeared to control the poisonous yellow gas. Without hesitation, I hit the switch causing the gas to finally dissipate. We then dropped to the floor and slowly began to catch our breaths for a few minutes. We finally stood up again after recovering and continued down the flesh line passage until we came across a wall of flesh with a red eye in the center. I stared directly at this eye, but then it fired a heat beam at us, forcing us to run out of the way. After that failed attempt to get it to blink, I sat there and began to think about how to deal with the eye. Then I noticed several bones next to me. I plucked one of the bones out of the ground and jabbed the eye with it, causing it to produce tears. Realizing that what I just did may be the key to getting past the wall of flesh, I jabbed the eye two more times, but when I attempted to jab it again, it became irritated and fired another heat beam at me. Then Miss Fushi saw that the eye was now vulnerable to being ripped out due to me jabbing it three times. She walked up to the eye, grabbed it, and began to gouge it, ripping it out of the socket in the process before tossing it aside. The wall of flesh finally dissipated, and we were able to proceed. We eventually arrived at a large chamber with a beating heart. I slowly walked over to the heart and put my hand on it to feel its beat. Then I noticed a strange red light below the heart. I began to realize that this strange red light is actually the only way out of this nightmarish chamber of flesh, and that it will only open if we completely stop the heart. Unfortunately, just after I stepped off of the platform with the red light, I saw something familiar in the door leading to the heart chamber. It was the blood fluke from earlier and it seemed to have merged with the tardigrade like creature to form an even deadlier parasite. The merged parasite, apparently not too happy about its previous encounter with me, began lashing its blood fluke tendrils at me. Then it attempted to spit the same vile juice used on the blood fluke at me. I jumped out of the way and the juice ended up hitting the heart instead, damaging it and causing it to beat irregularly. That is when we realized that the parasite is the key to our escape. With quick thinking, I lured the merged parasite over to Miss Fushi while tricking it into spitting its juice at the heart again. She then proceeded to stomp the parasite, pick it up, and then throw it at the damaged heart. Once it landed, it then proceeded to burrow into the heart and damage it from the inside. This caused the heart to beat faster and faster before finally stopping. The red light on the platform finally opened up into a portal. We looked at each other for a moment before holding hands and jumping into the portal. The portal took us to one final corridor. It appeared to have a space-like setting with crystals floating in the background. 
At the end of the corridor was a mysterious light that served as the exit. I thanked Miss Fushi for helping me escape, as she proceeded to thank me for doing the same. We exchanged one final glance before holding hands and walking into the light. The moment we stepped into the light was the moment I finally woke up from my dream. After I woke up, I began to wonder if my dream had any significance or if it was just a series of random events. I also wonder about the presence of Miss Fushi in my dream and how she helped me escape the chaos prevalent in it. Then again, it certainly wasn't the strangest dream that I had.